This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Ali, you just got back from a holiday. Mm. It's wonderful. You're with your um, beautiful partner. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Wonderful times. He was with his beautiful partner. Yes, that's true. That's me. Who? <laughs> I mean, that must have been awkward for you. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> Where'd you sleep? Oh. <laughs> so, this chick, she's gone. I don't know if you've read about it. So, she went on a European holiday with her boyfriend, right? But yeah, that's lovely. Like, just like everybody else on Instagram. Nice work. <laughs> the thing is, she found out just beforehand that he was cheating on her. <gasps> I saw this. She didn't want to, uh, you know, like. She didn't want to ruin the Euro ruin, vacay yeah, vibe. Yeah, well, it was all paid for. It was so a nine went, week holiday. Nine, nine weeks. Nine Nine week. weeks. Yes. Yeah. You just did three weeks with the, with somebody that you... And it was enough. Yeah, who hasn't cheated yeah. on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for nine weeks. So anyway, every time they got to a different tourist location, she would take a photograph of him and he would sort of be blurry in the photograph and then in the forefront was a post-it. Now, she told him that she was doing some fun thing for yeah. Instagram and then he was, she was going to show him at the end. Yeah. But on each post-it, they had a different message. Let me read out some of the post-its. Here we go. The first one said, my boyfriend and I have been dating for a year and a half. Hashtag I know. The next one. He told me six months in that he loved me. Hashtag, I know. I know. (laughs) We moved in together and started planning for our future. Hashtag, I I know. know. He did all the little things to make me feel loved and appreciated. Hashtag, I know. know. That's right, girls. We know. But he (laughs) would often take trips with his buddy to school. Grew other women behind my back. Hashtag. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> he acted like he cared for me and loved me when he was really playing me. Hashtag. I know. I know. He doesn't know that I know he's cheating on me. Hashtag. We I all know. know. <laughs> so after this trip, I'm breaking up with him. Hashtag. I know. I know. Hashtag, I know. What are you doing? Just ditch him. Yeah. Like it's the holidays, not worth it. Get oh out of there. Oh my gosh. Imagine knowing that the entire time and not being uh, and not saying anything about it. And also, I'm guessing, acting like you're not, there's nothing wrong. No, correct. So he doesn't suspect anything. I could never. No, could me you? either. Could not you? in a million no, years. But, but also, I'm always the one that organises the holidays in the relationship. Oh, so yeah. I would totally just go, okay, you're on your own now because he wouldn't know where yeah. we were staying, wouldn't know where the next <laughs> flight was. So, because uh, I would gatekeep all that information. Yes, so, in should. control. Yep. Dump him, leave him there. So, uh, what I do appreciate about this woman, though, is that this was so well strategically planned. Oh, it's super cold and calculating. Like, you know, you know, people plan a proposal mm. or they plan, you know, something mm. romantic to, mm. to go into such in depth <laughs> mm. maneuvers and calculations mm. and and plans <laughs> on how you're going to break up with somebody that's, that's that's so impressive in public that we're talking about it on radio it's actually <laughs> it's actually <laughs> thrilling <laughs> and it must be it's she's thrilling ter- for me to hear let she's alone a terrifying woman don't yeah. cross her absolutely yeah we take away from this do you reckon a lot of people out there have strategically planned their breakup yeah i reckon yeah i reckon timing is important because especially if there's like if it's your birthday coming up you wait of course you wait because there's a present there's right presents. yeah so christmas <laughs> do, when there's when you're exchanging presents, do you go before Christmas or after? As the break up her? Yes. As the break up her. Yes. Okay, so you're you're done with them. It depends on what they make because you, yes, like, are they planning a good are they, like, do you, are they Because a good what you could person? do is if you know you're going to break up with them, you fake them out. Tell yeah. them you're getting them something yeah. really good. They get you something equally good. Yeah. You get them something crappy and break up with them. I've actually let someone fly um, from Sydney to Perth and then broken up with them so, <gasps> so that I could do it in person. Wait, what? Well, <laughs> at, his, at his expense. Wait then. Yeah, yeah. So, so he flew from here to see you and you waited yeah. for him to get here yeah. to, to complete the flight to tell him instead of telling him before yeah, he boarded the flight? Uh, yeah, and then um, he said, take me back to the airport. I said... No. Nah. <laughs> call, call an Uber, buddy. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of fun. That was, Always a bit of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> but also, I mean, to be strategic, you could know that someone, your, your partner that you're going to break up with has got some good news yes. coming. So then oh, you to soften the blow. Yeah, so then you wait until they get their good news. They're reveling in the joy of yes. that. And then, then you, you hit them with... So you wait I'm until leaving. they win lotto and then you collect the winnings and yeah. half the winnings and then let I them go. Know. Is that the way it works? Let's <laughs> see if this happens in reality 13, 24, 10. We want to know um, strategically planned mm. breakups. Have you carried one out or have you had one carried out against mm. you? Well, uh, like upon reflection, it might seem a little cold and calculating, but also 
they probably deserved it. Let's face it, that guy was cheating on her. Duh. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to give somebody $300 to spend at Herdsman Market. Oh, yes. $300 That's a now. lot of money. Entertain this Father's Day with our state's best produce, all under one roof at the Herdsman Market. They've got everything. It's so good. All right, we are talking about those breakups that are strategic and planned. Amy's in Parkwood. Hi, Amy. Hi, how you going? Good, Amy. Did you strategically break up with somebody, Amy? I was the person who was strategically broken up oh, with. Oh, okay. What happened? <laughs> um, so my ex-husband waited until our entire life and house belongings had been shipped up to a remote community up north with a government job before he Facebook texted me and said, I want a divorce. Oh, what? So hang on, who was taking the job up north, you or him? He was. He was. So, so he's, he's taken everything because it's it's been they paid for it to be shipped up north, and then he went, "I want a divorce. See you later." In a Facebook text. Where were Instagram. you? Uh, I was still in Perth. I had resigned from my job, had tenants yeah. in our house that we owned together, and was waiting to move up five days later. And he had all the furniture. So then, yeah. so he said this. What happened next? I uh, got a divorce. But like. <laughs> Did, did you, you get, just, did did you, you get did, your stuff back? Did you just have one fold up chair? <laughs> like, what was it? <laughs> um, yeah, so I ended up having to pay for half of my belongings to be shipped back from up north. No. Um, so that Why? is a, what we call in the profession a dog act. He's a monster. Which is bad against dogs, to be honest. Dogs I know. Would never I do that to you. Well. Yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> that he is a monster. To That's... know that he's gonna do that to you, I and know. then to, like, I mean, come on. And when you just... resign from your job and everything, like That's... it's like dragging you down and then kicking you in the gutter. So that was really strategically done to really give you one last kick. Yes. Really. Yes. Because oh. he didn't have to do that. He could have said, I'm taking this job. I don't want to be with you anymore. You divide your assets. You get to stay where you are and keep your job. Isn't it amazing? They always say it, it would be so great to see um, with your current partner what you'd like, what they're like when you break up because mm. then you see the true version yes, that, of them. Exactly, that's if only right. people are forced to show that version of themselves at the start at the of a relationship. Yes, you could make some informed decisions. Oof. Thanks, Amy. Shay's in North Perth. Hello. Hi. Hi, Shay. All right, Shay. Um, talk to us about a strategic breakup. What have you got for us? Well, so basically, it's against me. Oh, again, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so me, me and my ex-boyfriend was ex-partner was living together for like four or five years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then um, we had all the Halloween party together. After the Halloween party, he just like, look, if this isn't working. I think we need to break up. So he had the Halloween Halloween party. You were dressed as a what? <laughs> Good question. What was your costume for Halloween? Well, uh, squid game. Squid game. <laughs> <laughs> what was what was he? And then he shot you. Basically, was he Squid Games as well? Yeah. So the little little giant girl that it is. Yeah, yeah it's the yeah. little the little girl with the pony. Yeah, yeah so who turns her head around? That one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's a really sad tale, but the fact that you just as good games makes it funny. I love that he's like, I can hang on until the Halloween's yeah, over. Yeah. Did he at least take um, the mask off when he broke up with you or did he mm, keep it on? Mm, it's a good question. Why don't you just keep it on? Like, yeah. seriously. It's devastating. Yeah, I think definitely planned it, but yeah. Yeah, well, he wanted to get in one last bash, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. One last party. And he couldn't what? fathom the idea of yeah. being with you in November. Yeah. yeah. It's just and much. I can just see, you know what, it's like a really serious emotional moment mm. where you're both mm. bearing your souls to each other. Mm. He's wearing a black mask with a square on it. Yours has got a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> like it's never going to work, is it? It's never going to work. <laughs> oh, thank you, Shay. All right, 13, 24, 10. Let's take some more of these. We want to know, have you been involved either as the protagonist or perhaps the victim yes. of a strategic breakup yes. where you're like, oh, this was definitely yeah. planned. Things were put in place. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, just on the weekend, actually, and yeah. she was telling me about her sister, yes. who uh, they'd been married for, oh, God, more than 20 years. Mm. and But it, it, you could tell it was over. Like, yeah. it was one of those dwindling relationships. And then um, he filed for a divorce just after um, her father's inheritance came through. <gasps> so her father had Very passed away. Clever. And it had, yeah. So but that becomes her asset law, then. Doesn't matter. It's, it's a shared I asset. I know, but like... I know. You can see what he did. Oh, in the court of... In the, in the, morally, you can yes. see it. In a court of law, they're like, no, well, that's a shared asset now. 
God, that is, that's, that's. It's mean, isn't That's it? That's both mean and clever. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic breakups is what we're talking about. Laura's in Wellard. Hello. Hi. Hi, Laura. What happened? Uh, it was a bit of a long one. So I wanted to break up with my partner, mm. but then someone in their family passed away. So I was like, well, I can't break up with them now. <laughs> yes, because you're a nice person. Uh, I'm not yeah. that horrible. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, and then they were going off on a trip and they were going to be gone for quite a few months. So I was like, that's fine. We'll um, we'll drift apart. But that'll make my life easier. Yes. Uh, but then they invited me on part of the trip. So I was like, oh, okay. So I went on the trip. And then the day we got home from the airport, I broke up with them. Yeah. Um, and they were quite upset with me because then every single time someone asked how their trip was, they would have to say, well, my partner broke up with me <laughs> even though they'd been gone for months and they'd done all these exciting things. That was the only thing that they told us. You ruined it. And you then also, it. also, think about it as well, all those um, uh, photos of you together on the trip. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, no, oh, there were a lot of photos nice. on the trip. <laughs> Because when you're with somebody else on a trip, you're not really taking many selfies because you're all about taking photos together. Yes, that's right. So then suddenly all the photos (laughs) null and void from that holiday. You really did ruin everything, Laura. Because every photo is a a picture of heartache. It's a constant (laughs) reminder of your trauma. I mean, well done, obviously. Uh, Tam's in Como. Hello. Hi, hey. love the show, guys. Oh, Tam, stop it. We love you. Come on. Now, <laughs> settle down. Um, tell us about a strategic breakup. What do you got for us? Okay, so back in the day, I worked with a girl um, in an office block, and she started dating one of the guys that worked with us. Mm. It got all hot and heavy, got really serious. They moved in together, seemed like the happy ever after, until he did the dirty, oh. and she had to obviously go around one day after she left him and pick up all of her things. And he said that he wouldn't be there, so she went in, packed up all of her stuff. But as her last revenge, this is pretty gross, she urinated in a jug and then she emptied all of his cologne into the toilet and then transferred her urine into his cologne bottle. Okay, this is next level. Like I've then, heard of revenge yeah, stuff before, yeah, but no, yeah, I've never heard yeah. this one. No, anymore. I've heard of it, Natalie. I wear it. It's called Pissy Me Arsky. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really nice. <laughs> so we don't know if he ever really found out, but um, I, I think he might have because we all started talking about it, you know, yes. later on. So who knows? But it was her classic revenge. Yeah. yeah that's, that's Calvin Klein, number one. <laughs> <laughs> That is, you know what? That is next level conniving. But he shouldn't have cheated on her, should he? Be careful, because they might get you back. You'd have to buy a tiny little funnel. It's a (laughs) funnel into each bottle. Anyway, that was some great ideas. <laughs> some really, really, really great so ideas. It, I, didn't, I didn't realise it was supposed to be instructional. Well, uh, you, you know, know what? You take, take from, from this show what, what you will. What you can. We're going to go back to Tam. Um, I'm oh, sorry, Tam. A- uh, back to Amy, um, who uh, partner had moved all the furniture. Oh, yeah. He moved all everything. All the furniture. She, uh, because they were moving as a couple to a remote community mm. in the in the north of our state. She'd quit her job and everything. Dude, um, and then he said, I want a divorce. Yeah. $300 to spend at the Herdsman Market. Entertain this Father's Day with our state's best produce all under the one roof at the Herdsman Market. Well done there, Amy. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hey, I was um, reading this article yesterday, guys, and it said the truth about Australian secret serial killers. (laughs) Secret serial killers? Yes. So there's ones that we know about in the paper Mm. that we read about every day. Mm. (laughs) We don't. It says that. How's this for a statistic? You ready? It, it said that an average person unknowingly walks past 36 murderers in their lifetime. Stop it. <laughs> you. <laughs> Look at Ellie. And <laughs> it's not going to all be today. I mean, it'd be unlikely. It'd be if unlikely. You can just get him out of the, go- get out of the way in one yeah. go. <laughs> so tick him off as you go. I know yeah. I've yeah. gone And if you three. do, if that does happen today and you walk past all 36, let us know what suburb you're in. <laughs> and also, I'm maybe, pretty sure we all know which one it is. And maybe run. <laughs> Don't just Maybe saunter. Run. Maybe run. So um, some experts believe that there could be thousands 
of active serial killers around the world right now committing most heinous crimes and going completely under the radar. So are they saying we've walked past 36 murderers or 36 serial killers? Um, murderers in their lifetime. Okay. And then they're saying um, then there's there's thousands of active serial killers that we don't know because we haven't found the bodies and uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's so right. they oh. said uh, they, they believe there could be a number of serial killers dotted around Australia right now going completely undetected and walking freely among us. I feel like this is my thing with like social media, um, cell, like mobile phones, pinging locations, yes, and um, CCTV everywhere. Yeah, you've been Evident. watching Hunted. Haven't How you? <laughs> on earth can you get away with? Easy, easy. Former detective Luke Taylor has said because of ninety percent, ninety five percent of our, our great southern land is uninhabited, uninhabited oh. Wolf Creek. Basically, oh. we're, Nathan, there is... you were telling people how to be serial killers. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> if you are a serial killer, you don't realise the amount of land we have to then be it's able not to for you. dispose of a body and have it never found again. Then you should, you've chosen the wrong profession. Profession? Just be a normal killer. <laughs> don't be a serial one. Do you know what the definition of a serial killer is? What? It's that they have killed more than one person on more than one day. Oh. So you can't be a serial killer if you kill two people on the one so day. So it's got nothing to do with serial at all. Nothing I thought to do it was if you've, if, you've, if you've murdered someone just right. <laughs> That's a serial. Stop it. That's sin bitten yourself. No, that no, 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 that's great. That is not bad. Okay, Ali, come back here. I'll come back here. I want to know. Okay, 36 murderers have walked past. She's going home to lock her doors. What are you talking about? 36 murderers have walked past. And, uh, in, have you, hmm. do you, do you, what sort of person do you think looks like a murderer? Oh, um, Harry. So I think he's the most likely. Have you walked past them? Like, do you ever do you think? Do you know that you have? Is do you that feel the, the energy? For me, I think a, an adult man that chooses to wear a bow tie every day <laughs> is oh. possibly a serial killer, excluding scientists. You're right. But uh, so, what you go up and say? Excuse me. Are you a scientist? And if they say no, then you go. Well, you're obviously a serial killer if you see somebody wearing a bow tie. Oh, you're on your way to a black tie function. You can be on the way to a function. If you're on the way to a function, no worries. If you are every day waking up and putting a bow tie on as an adult man and there is no particular reason for it, you're out to murder many people. I would think that would be a very distinguishing feature. Yeah, that would I be. know. I mean, obviously all the Which is great because you know why? It throws you off. It's like, oh, he's wearing a bow tie. He won't murder me. He's going to murder you the most. So... Do you reckon there's many men wearing bow ties right now? <laughs> Just taking them off. <laughs> if there's a guy out dressed. there, if there is a guy out there today that is wearing a bow tie today, Just taking it off. Yeah. Well, they're not going to bring in, are they? No. If you're wearing a bow tie today, then you have to kill Nathan. Thirteen twenty four ten. Let me know. Let's see if they're out there. Let's see if these bow tie wearing people are out there. Not scientists, because we know that makes sense. Yeah. Apparently. If there is a man wearing a man wearing a bow tie today, let us know if you're murdering <laughs> anybody. No, I just want to, our audience wouldn't wear bow ties. Would they? Or murder people. Would they? No, they'd murder people. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan has a theory. Yeah. That um, if you see somebody who wears a bow tie every day and isn't a scientist. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you're a scientist, it's okay to wear a bow tie. I think when I'm just trying to unpack the stupid. logic. <laughs> No, but and scientists, by it. scientists are smart. They, they'd make good killers, <laughs> they to be fair. A You're a acid. serial killer. A That's the upshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think, yeah, you're going to murder heaps of people. Uh, we'll call her Susan from North Perth. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. How are you? Okay, Susan. Hi, Susan. Nathan put the call out for somebody who wears a bow tie every day and isn't a scientist. Um, th- this isn't you, but you do know someone no. who fits the bill. Yes, and I'm terrified now because he wears a bow tie every single day to work. This is my thing. You know why? With such a polite uh, appearance hides a dark truth. Mm, mm. Oh, my God. So I have to watch out now. So tell me. um, I would say the dark truth that it's hiding is that they're single. (laughs) (laughs) Is this this person single? Um, No. Oh, So he's married. He has a partner who allows this to happen. Well, he's got a good cover then, doesn't he? Yes. So, is he into the sciences? <laughs> no. no, no. What sort no. of what sort of industry? Without telling us exactly, <laughs> does this person you work with? Yeah, is yes. I can't really say because, to be perfectly honest, yeah. I know a lot of my colleagues are probably listening. <laughs> yes, but they know. know. They You've will disguised know. I know your one voice. wants to be murdered. <laughs> disguised your voice with that amazing <laughs> South African accent you're putting on there, <laughs> <laughs> Susan. Um, <laughs> I'm really good at accents. Yes, it's I'm amazing. Really it's amazing. Yeah, no, I really we can't even know. tell that you're Mexican. It's amazing. G'day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name. My name's really Sheila. 
Yeah, hey, so Susan, okay, putting all that aside, can you see yeah. this guy could like could possibly be a murderer? <laughs> well, possibly. Yeah. Well, one doesn't know because otherwise. You know, your theory of walking That's right. past murderers and not knowing wouldn't be a thing. Mm. So, so you're working So, it's a bit one. of a worry. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, am. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad that you've used a fake name and, of yes, course, this fake, amazing, amazing fake accent. accent. Yeah. <laughs> Super fake. Mm, the accent's yeah. starting to slip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Susan, just FYI, you'll be dead by the end of the week. <laughs> Well, and we all laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> you just look look out for the South African Susan and the yes. other two. I mean, yeah. the, the bad yeah. news is it's already Thursday, yeah. so um, hey, Susan, <laughs> time's um, running out. Susan, uh, this this audio will be played at your funeral. Uh, Would you like to just say um, just say a quick goodbye to all your friends and family right now? Yeah, just a shout out to all my friends and family. Love you. It was great knowing you. <laughs> and now into some REM. That's right. <laughs> Susan, it's been really nice knowing you. Thank you for oh, calling. All the best, Susan. Susan. You're very good at accents. Have a great well. last couple of days. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. So Adele is doing her residency in Vegas. Yes. I would like to go and see that. That's the one she put off for ages because she wasn't yeah. happy with the way the production was going, but it's actually happening now. Yeah. She would be amazing to see. And it was so strange because you would think that, that you would think a residency is when people are on their way out. Yes, that's right. You know, it's like when we get been... celebrities for I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of yes. Here. We're not getting Debbie Gibson back in the day. Yes, or they've been <laughs> trapped into it by their evil manager. Yes. And, uh, that's the plot of Elvis, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spoiler no, that's alert. exactly what happened. <laughs> so um, this guy, he was so excited to be going to an Adele concert. Well, I would um, be excited too. She's the best. Yeah, he. Um, his name's Yuan. And he went there with a selfie stick. Okay, that's and a bit annoying. He wanted to, you know, and he had like the, you know, the three D, the the three sixties view on your camera, yeah. the panoramic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that sort of as the video. Happened so he's he wants time. to soak in the moment. Yeah, um, him, and his friend, be able Adele, to watch it forevermore. People around. Nobody yeah. watches those things ever again, do yeah. they? Yeah. So no. he's up there dancing and and singing around, you know, singing and you know, like you know, getting right into it. He's in the moment. And um, what's happened is. A woman, firstly, has come from behind and said, excuse me, can you sit down? There are people trying to watch this show and Mm. you're in front of of us. And and it's kind of a theatre environment, isn't it, rather than a a concert at a stadium kind of thing. So then Adele at that point has turned around and she's pointed out of the guy and she goes and once the song finished and said, okay, you can get up and start dancing now. And then he was like, oh, my gosh. So then a security, then he went just like, Crazy. Crazy. Well, he's got their go-ahead from Adele yes. herself. And then a security guard had come over and had a word to him and said, hey, you've got to calm down because you're <laughs> disturbing everybody around you. <laughs> you're being told to calm down at an Adele concert. <laughs> <laughs> there's something, there's something, there's something impressive and sad, <laughs> mostly sad about that. So Adele on stage mm. stops singing and addresses the fact that this guy keeps on getting bothered by mm. security. I mean, I love that she's sticking up for her fans. That's it's fantastic. Adorable. Hey, you with a stick in your hand is probably the best mm. sentence she's ever said. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, this guy is validated and all this sort of mm. stuff, right? Now, the woman that was sitting behind him that went and obviously spoke on behalf of the group of people that were, that they were mm. being, you know, that, 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 that were being annoyed. I'm sorry. Am I wrong to say that they deserve to enjoy this concert too? Mm, mm. How annoying was he? That's the question. Is he just up sort of swaying and clapping like that? Is that what he's doing? Well, Or is it more than that? Let's have a listen. (laughs) That's him? I'd be a bit annoyed if I'd paid good money, very good money, to go to see Adele and that guy singing in my ear. I know. I'd be because I I'd rather because I can't Adele. see Adele. Mm. I'm at Adele's residency, mm, mm, not mm. yours. Not Juan. Yeah. One person 
can ruin a show for mm, you. It's true. One person can ruin yeah. it for you. And I think, you know, yeah. Adele was right. You know, you can get up and dance and yes. blah, blah, blah. But I, like, I'm all for that. But it's a but seated don't auditorium. don't ruin everybody's enjoyment. When I went to see Kevin Hart here yes. at RSC Arena, yeah. um, I missed the end of the show. Yeah. Like, so he builds up to this big story that he's telling. Yeah. And I missed the end of it because there was a brawl <laughs> r- right in front of us. Now, who gets into a brawl at a Kevin Hart show? And the security came and dragged this guy out and he's, like, laying into them. It's a, and it was such a spectacle. We're just watching that. And then the show was finished. It's like, oh. Kevin Hart. I can understand someone being king hit at a wiggle show. but I know. <laughs> Kevin Hart. Not Kevin Hart. I know. Come and on. this was And the people at RAC Arena told us that when the UFC was on here, nobody was ejected. And yet people were ejected at Kevin Hart. This is Figure brilliant. that out. What's we, happening? We want to know, has somebody annoyed you at a show and possibly ruined it? 13, 24, 10. If you were the person that did this to somebody... <gasps> Oh, my gosh, oh, you I just remembered. You're not self-aware enough to know that, are no, you? No, I am. And it wasn't me. It was a person who was sitting next to me. I was in a box seat and I was at the RAC arena and we were watching <laughs> Marley Cyrus and the person sitting next to me went, oh, they're doing like um, like uh, cappuccinos in there in the box seat. So she came up with a steaming hot cappuccino and she put it on the ledge and then you know, beneath the ledge is other people sitting. And then the vibrations of Marley were so powerful, it slowly vibrated and the people down there, they, they, they wore hot Hot cappuccino, hot cappuccino, and we both just like slumped back in our chairs. And and it didn't happen. The They've been <laughs> hit in the head by a cup, a saucer, <gasps> and uh, the entire contents. Oh. Okay, well that would have ruined it. We're we going to give somebody one hundred and fifty dollars to spend at McRobert Distillery for tours and tastings. Check out this family-owned and operated distillery. Details at McRobertDistillery.com.au. That's what we call compensation. Did somebody ruin the show for you? Or was it you? <laughs> <laughs> When somebody's ruined the show for you, because we got that, we like the fact that Adele stuck up for her fan who was being hassled by security, but also the people around him were a little upset that he was getting into it to their detriment, mean? basically. You have a problem with it. <laughs> and he was also... He was also singing really loudly, and was if that's that the right in your goat sound effect, or was that <laughs> no, him? no, that was him. That, that, was, was, that was him. That was the sounded show. like do the screaming Should we goat. We compare. Let's this go. is the screaming goat. <laughs> now do this, kid. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Who said a goat to the Adele concert? That's, that's weird. amazing. Uh, Nikki's in Big Park. Morning, Nick. Good morning. Hi, okay, Nikki. Did somebody ruin the show for you, Nick? What happened? Yeah, so I took my daughter to the Harry Styles concert um, this year and the um, people behind us were so drunk that um, one of them ended up vomiting all down my daughter's back. Oh, oh Nikki. How old's your daughter? Uh, she's 20. Oh, okay. Nikki. Thank God, because I thought I was like, going to say 12. Yes. <laughs> no, I, mean, no, I don't think no, there's no, an no. age where which no, you're Natalie, happy about it. No, no, you're right. Yeah. You shouldn't throw up on women of any age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 no. like, I would say on, no. on or men. Or men. Mm. Yeah, but you know, it, it does Not only worse, was she um, covered in vomit, but then the smell all around under the seat and everything for the oh. whole show was just Vile. Who's, so, who's going to a Harry Styles concert and getting that blind? Uh, you're throwing up. Seventeen-year-olds, Nathan. Have you met one? Yes. Yeah. Are you serious? Well, surprisingly, really? they weren't. I reckon that they were like mid thirties. Ah, that's even Yeah, funnier. like okay. they weren't young. Um, they got point, up and left straight at, away. At what point in the concert was it? Right at the beginning. Oh. Second. So what is so yeah. so what does one do when they've been thrown up on so early in the show? You go and buy some merch to change it? Well, one mother's goes down and buys a sixty five dollar yeah, um, Harry Styles shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's do you reckon help. that's just one of Harry Harry Styles' roadies <laughs> that's just strategically yeah. placed throwing up on people to try and drive up <laughs> merch sales? <laughs> I mean, interesting tactic. Uh, thanks, Nikki. That's truly awful. Uh, Oliver is in Florida. Hi, Oliver. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hi, good, good Ollie. Ollie. Okay, so what happened? Um, so I recently went over to the World Cup, uh, Women's World Cup final in, in um, Sydney. How amazing. How much did tickets cost for that? Oh, mate, they ranged to like, you could pay like four grand for a ticket. Yes, no. plus, plus, plus airfares. Like yeah. 200. Yeah, well, with airfares and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we have this um, crazy, um, this, these Spanish supporters in front of us. Mm. Every time they got near the goal, they'd just stand up. <laughs> and there's like, I, I reckon there's like kind of the rule, right? Like, it's like, you know, you don't stand up. Otherwise, everyone behind you has to stand yes. up, which yes. is like fair enough. And then there was these 
old people behind me that kind of like, you know, they couldn't really stand up and they kept giving me the look. So I, I said something to them, and but they kept doing it. And I like asked security politely. I was just like, you know, like, please. But they kept doing it. And then, yeah, we all ended up missing the goal. And I was just like, oh, I'm I in the wrong for like, you know, wanting them, you know, to just like, please stay seated because, you know, these old people behind me can't. Yes, can't, can't see. see. So wait, yeah. the, you so missed the because, goal. Because they jumped up we, in front yeah, of it. The, yeah, the Spanish goal. We missed the Spanish yeah. goal. Because the Spanish supporters. Did you get swept mm-hmm. up in the emotion of the moment, though? Because um, obviously Spanish supporters are very passionate about their football team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. For yeah, sure. but you for actually sure. didn't see the goal. <laughs> you went no, all that way. Goal after, all, after all that as well. <laughs> yeah, so. Hey, Oliver, how old are you right now? <laughs> I just turned 30. 30. No, 31. 30. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? What just happened then? Isn't that disgusting? When you realise you're a year older. Oh, oh, my God, I'm old. Yeah. No, wow. I'm just thinking because, you know, you're at the age now where you're um, where you're complaining about people standing yeah, up. Yeah, that's right. Match. I know. And, and this is a sporting match. Exactly. And you know what? That wouldn't have been when you were 30. That's because no. you're 31. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that, Oliver. <laughs> Debbie's in Calamunda. Hello. Good morning, love the show. Love oh, Debbie, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, talk us through it. Who ruined the show? Um, I went to Paul Simon and Sting concert. It was in South Perth, for sure. And my girlfriends were out the front because they, they were dodgy and they didn't want to pay. And I wasn't on my own. And I get to my row of seating and there was a, a group there and there's a guy sitting in my seat. Yeah. So I went up to him and I said, excuse me, sir, but uh, it was very nice. Mm. And I said, excuse me, but you're in my seat. Mm. And he just turned his head and looked the other way. Oh. And I said, excuse me. Excuse me, sir, but you're in my seat. Mm. And he said, no, I'm not. And I said, well, you are. Short story, I sat over him and I said, if you don't move, I'm going to sit on your knee and wait for security to come. So I sat on his knee and because he just wouldn't move. <laughs> he sat, he said, on, he sat on a stranger's knee absolutely, to teach him a lesson. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And I'm, I sat on his knee and I said, I don't, because I wasn't going to sit there anyway. I was going to stand and dance, but I Principal. wanted a seat until... Because security would have kicked me out, basically. Yeah. And he said, well, someone's sitting in my seat and I haven't got a seat. I said, well, oh. sorry, sir, but that's not... Yeah, exactly. Yes. I said, but Take that's it up with not them. my problem. Yes. Take it up with him, get security. So I sat on his knee and his wife was just... Gl- I said, I don't care, I'm sitting here his until he His wife was there? <laughs> he w- yeah, absolutely. There was like five of them sitting there. <laughs> so they were all sitting what? in the wrong seats, the whole group? All of them sitting in the wrong seat because someone had their seat. How and I said, entitled. well, that's not my problem. No. Yeah, and I said, that's not, not my problem. And he just turned, it, turned his stupid head away from me. <laughs> so in the end, I sat on his knee and everyone's wetting themselves behind me. And um, I said, security, security. And in the end, we all got moved. And I sat down for about 13 seconds. The song came on and then I went and danced. <laughs> when you were sitting on his lap, mm. um, were you... D- oh, I think he enjoyed it. Yeah, I I were you dancing a little bit? You know, when you bop up no, and down a little no, bit? Right, I don't know. The music? No, no, we didn't want to no. talk about... No, we didn't want to talk about anything else except the tickets. Thank yep. you very much. And did you sit yeah. um, facing out or facing in? <laughs> oh, Nathan, where's this coming from? Oh, no, I we just want the detail. In. We just want the detail. Would that would have that would have made him even more uncomfortable, exactly. you would hope. Uncomfortable, yeah. Made yeah. him more uncomfortable. Right in the eyes. Right mm. in the eyes. I got him. Don't worry. I got you him. You got him, very nice about it. I was, you know, very calm and, yeah, but anyway, we all moved and yeah. It was a great night. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, thank you. We've had some fantastic yes, calls thanks, just then, everybody. everybody. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think we might go back to the start. Oh, yeah. Well, because Nikki's daughter was vomited on. Yeah. And that's at, the Harry, funny. at the beginning of the Harry Styles concert. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> she needs some compensation. $150 suspended at McRobert Distillery going your oh, way. Oh, nice one. Drink, Thanks, everybody. Drink responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.